friends. I have a gavel, actually, but I just felt like you need a little bit bigger of a group before I use the gavel. But hi, everyone. Thanks for coming to Easy Rotary. We have Noelle Purdy speaking, us, speaking to us today. She is the president of the Franklin County Coalition for Progress of Blake Cummer, who gets shamed. Oh, it's, is it Clint? Clint. Uh, there's no shame for Clint. He's allowed to be late. <laughs> Thank you for coming, Clint. We're good. We're happy to see you. Um, Noelle is the president of the Franklin County Coalition for Progress. She recently took the lead on the response to the Burroughs and DO happenings. And she's going to talk to us a little bit about that. And then after that, I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about Pride Franklin County. So. Are you the founder of the Franklin County? I am one of the founders of the Franklin County Coalition for Progress. Oh. Yeah. Do you want me to stay here? Yeah, we can we can like What's your what do you guys want me to be? You want me to be like up front? We normally like you know, like we do like here's your podium. Okay. You don't have money all the way up there though. You can get Can I closer. sit on it? Yeah. Like us? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, um, so Philip and I are both tag team because um, Philip's been involved with the coalition and Pride Franklin County for a long time. Um, so, uh, as we were talking about, uh, Franklin County Coalition for Progress and one of the founding members, I just put together a summary and handed it out, handed it out um, of sort of a timeline of uh, the work that we've done and how we started. And just as a FYI, um, if you go to our website at FCCP or FCC for progress.org and click on about um, there's hyperlinks to all of these uh, timeline bullets to like news articles and event happenings and all of that jazz so uh, you can dig deeper um, if you want and go to our website and, and look at all of that um, so how many of you have heard of the coalition pretty much everybody so <laughs> I can uh, talk a little bit about how we formed. Um, so uh, several of us in Franklin County attended the Women's March um, in 2017 and uh, we came back and uh, we were all jazzed up and said we need to start organizing and organizing what we didn't know exactly what we just knew that there were a lot of people who were interested in coming together to address things that we were concerned about um, basically as a consequence of the 2016 election. So um, these really were the seeds of a progressive movement being formed in Franklin County, which I don't know if there's ever been a progressive new movement before this, for those of you who've lived in the community. Not in the past 50 years. Okay. <laughs> <coughs> so, uh, so we came together and one of the first things that we did is we formed a private group on Facebook and within a week, it blew up to 500 members. And so then we knew, okay, there's more people. It's not just um, a couple of us who are concerned and worried and anxious. Uh, so um, with that, we decided to organize uh, an event at Wilson College um, in t early 2017 uh, in February, uh, which we called meeting number one. And uh, over 100 people showed up. And really the purpose of that meeting was to bring people together and just talk about how we were feeling and letting people know that they weren't alone. And uh, we also knew that there were a lot of people who had energy that wanted to be directed to do something. And so then we uh, started organizing, pulled together a group, and uh, formed a nonprofit. And uh, a lot of our work is focused on uh, social justice and equality issues. From the very beginning, um, the LGBTQ community and issues around the LGBTQ community were one of our priorities. And uh, with grassroots groups um, that are volunteer driven, you really need to go with where the energy is. And so we had a lot of love and support um, and allies in the community for the LGBTQ community. And so <laughs> that's, that's always been a part um, of our work from the very beginning. Um, and uh, also working uh, with generally like educating the community with diversity and inclusion. We've organized training events. We've done forums uh, on um, the immigration, immigrant community 
um, educating the community about you know what was happening um, a couple of years ago uh, under the Trump administration um, with refugee resettlement issues and immigrant ice raids and you know what are the rights of immigrants and so we really kind of pivoted to uh, whatever the topic was at the time. Um, in 2018, we formed, uh, we had our first Pride Franklin County Festival, um, which I think may have been the first Pride Festival in Franklin County. It was. It, it was? It okay. was. Yeah. And um, Philip and Preston were a part of that um, and have been a part of it since and have also um, been on the steering committee and Philip is on the board of directors of the Franklin County Coalition for Progress. And so we've had since then uh, two um, festivals in person pre-pandemic. And uh, uh, would you want to talk about Pride Franklin County? Yeah, sure. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. So <laughs> we had our first Pride in 2018. And then again, we had another Pride Festival pre-pandemic. And then we kind of had to put things a little bit on hold for a moment. And then coming out of the pandemic, the first round of thinking we were kind of coming out and safe, we were able to gather last summer for a silent auction and Pride Month event called Taste of Pride, which was the first time that we had ever done that. Wilson College hosted us for that. It sold out in 48 hours, which was hugely surprising to me. Like I didn't think like little old Franklin County wanted drag queens and silent auctions so bad. So that was awesome. <laughs> and we were able to raise funds to that, which are now helping us plan the most fabulous Pride event for this year, which will also be at Wilson College. And it is the Sunday before National Coming Out Day, which is either the 10th or the 11th of October, whatever the Sunday is. I wanna say, let's say it's the 11th. That's what my intuition tells I see people looking for their phones. So let me know in a second if I am or not. Um, we're also doing Taste of Pride again this year. Um, really excited. One of our own, he's not here tonight, but James Nadeau, who's also a fellow Rotarian, has been on the Pride Committee since last year. He was heavily involved in Taste of Pride last year, but he has kind of taken that on. And he is very theatrical and full of production ideas, so I can't wait to see what him and his team pull together for this year's Taste and then we we're also having our first volunteer orientation. We've had so many people reach out in response to the NDO. There was a lot of community response of people that just like, what can we do? How can we help? Do you need volunteers? What are you doing? So we need volunteers for our larger events that we have, but while we have the momentum, we thought, wouldn't it be good to get people together and kind of educate the community that wants to be involved? Like this is the process. It's kind of like an all year planning event for our large festival. So if you want to be involved in that, we're giving our volunteers the opportunity to do so. And we're all meeting with them on Thursday at Dr. Day's office <laughs> to get them reared up and maybe find a committee they might have interest in or just kind of tell them what volunteering day of at the big event will be like. But it's really cool to like have so many. I mean, literally in like two weeks in response to the NDO, we had the website set up to have people do the volunteer form if they wanted to. And it was just like every day, like a trickle of like da 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 ding, like these new people. And they're all people that I surprisingly don't know in the community and want to be involved. So it's been cool to see that type of feedback and the community response to want to get involved. So yeah, Taste of Pride will be June 26th, June 25th. I'm like all of off by one day. <laughs> Come on. I don't think I could. I'm going to give you the official dates in just one second. 26th this Sunday. The Saturday the 25th, June 25th is Taste of Pride. And then Sunday, October 9th is Franklin County Pride, which is the day before a Monday holiday. So don't worry, you'll have off the next day too. <laughs> Come have a good time. And that pretty much brings you up to Pride County. Um, before I pivot to talk a little bit more about the non-discrimination ordinance, um, a few other items in the in the one pager. Um, we also, uh, over the last few years, uh, worked with Racial Reconciliation, which is another grassroots group that formed to focus energy on systemic racism. 
and so um, some of our partnerships with them over the last couple of years are providing, I call it backbone support or administrative support um, in, in getting the word out for different events and demonstrations. For example, um, the first uh, love demonstration uh, that was in response to the George Floyd um, murder and um, other Black Lives Matters type of demonstrations that were had in the community. Um, and then uh, we also partnered with Racial Reconciliation on creating the first Martin Luther King Day of Service event in Franklin County. <laughs> A lot of firsts in the social justice space in Franklin County, Pennsylvania, which I'm really proud of that. And you know what, I've thought about it over the last four years. Um, I, our, our mission statement, the Franklin County Coalition for Progress is a 501c3 nonprofit whose mission is to advance social justice and equality to all residents in Franklin County. I don't think there are any other organizations in Franklin County that focus on social justice or equality issues. Um, so I do believe that we are filling a need and a void. And um, I think the fact that we're totally volunteer operated totally volunteer operated, I think speaks volumes to the fact that there are people who want to get involved and make our community better and find ways to increase equality um, and fairness, inclusion, justice to several populations that don't have that right now. So any questions before we start talking about the non-discrimination ordinance? I know a lot of you probably were involved with it behind the scenes and out in front. <laughs> I see people who are at the borough council meetings who are here today. Okay. All right. So um, the non-discrimination ordinance was um, something that actually we had um, ex tr tried to put some support around when we first formed in 2017, where we approached the borough with some type of um, idea that they consider a law and. Uh, at that point in time, um, there was no buy-in whatsoever on council uh, for entertaining a local law, but what they had done was uh, pass a resolution in support of the state law being amended to include LGBTQ inclusive language uh, that protected um, the LGBTQ community in public accommodations, housing, and employment, which currently the state law um, does not have uh, those protections with those specific classes. So the borough council uh, tried to you know, punt it up to the state. Um, over the last few years, it became clear that the state wasn't going to uh, amend the uh, Human Relations Act to include SOGI language. So um, one of our board members, Melissa Matson, um, oh, I should have paused too. I think what's important, and again, when I reflect on all this, that we had Pride Franklin County in the intervening years, and that we had other events and tried to create more awareness and support in general for the community and starting to create more allies who are comfortable saying, yes, I'm an ally, or yes, I care, and kind of building that um, network and awareness, right? So then uh, fast forward to, uh, the fall of 2020, I think it was, summer, fall of 2020, and Melissa Matson, who is a board member of Franklin County Coalition for Progress and one of the founding members also of Pride Franklin County, she took it upon herself to reach out to President of Borough Council, Alex Lea, and ask um, if she could have a conversation about reintroducing the idea of a non-discrimination ordinance. Um, and Alice was open to that. Uh, Alice brought along uh, Mike Herbert, who at the time was Vice President of Council. And um, I, those early conversations, though, from, say, August, September through February, maybe, of the next year, of 2021, uh, they weren't easy. It wasn't uh, like, yes, we're on board, yes, we're going to do this. It was very clear that there was resistance from their staff from borough staff, including the borough solicitor, um, for various reasons. And so we actually had to convince them that we weren't, <laughs> that we weren't crazy, that it was legally possible to have a local law. They were trying to say all kinds of things. 
uh, and there are pretty uh, a lot of examples around the state that you know other municipalities have done this so anyway um, we had a lot of conversations and uh, where there was a turning point was when we brought on Pennsylvania uh, Youth Congress uh, which is a nonprofit that advocates statewide for non-discrimination laws for the LGBTQ community and uh, their director at the time was also a lawyer and uh, an advocate and he was the first one to I believe get um, a local NDO adopted um, in the state of Pennsylvania at a municipality I believe he was the first one I'm not but, okay. <laughs> I think when he was like when he in was, the youth congress in, as like a youth. Yes, as right. a youth, right. And then he started the youth congress. Yes. Yes. So um, Jason Landau Goodman. Landau Goodman, right. So he has been our champion and subsequent, um, there was a leadership transition there with President Hildebrand. They both, without their support and their knowledge and their education, you know, we wouldn't have been able to at least you know, even have a breakthrough conversation uh, with the president, vice president of council. We really needed their expertise to help us convince them that uh, it was legally possible because there was internal resistance happening um, with the administration. So uh, once we got to that point, uh, it was uh, recommended actually by uh, Jason that uh, the council could form an exploratory committee and um, there seemed to be buy-in for that. And so that's the approach that we took at the Borough of Chambersburg was that they formed an exploratory committee with three council members. Uh, they had um, a series of meetings where experts were invited in, they were recorded. This is all recorded, by the way, it's all public record. Um, and, uh, and then a report was written and a recommendation. And the recommendation was for um, this ordinance to be adopted. Um, there is a fact sheet uh, attached, if, you know, you, yes, yes, that kind of outlines the timeline and the history and some quick facts uh, about NDOs and then the local process that we had here in Chambersburg. Um, it eventually was adopted. Um, I think it was adopted in September or October of uh, 2021. Uh, it was vetoed by the mayor, uh, which was interesting. I guess it's it's it goes without saying, but this is all very political, clearly. <laughs> and it does matter who's in who's who's in charge and who's elected. Uh, and I think that is like the outcome of where we are today is that we well before we shift to that conversation about voter education, um, but uh, the mayor vetoed it. The council overrode it. There was an election in November. New council members were elected, and uh, their first order of business in January at the reorganization meeting was to get it on the agenda, January of 2022, uh, and how to repeal the ordinance. Um, I, per I personally like my. I have personal experience with the current leadership on council. And um, I, vindictive and petty uh, are the most apt words, and I, I totally feel comfortable using those um, in that they have a history of being vindictive and petty. The current leadership uh, was leadership before uh, Alice and, and prior to Alice. Uh, Keith. Keith, right. Um, so it's all very political. Uh, and um, so we last year spent a lot of energy there's a lot of energy that goes into advocacy and I think that that was another growth point for us as a group was how do you advocate um, because that's another kind of parallel story of doing this kind of social justice work is that we can do these festivals and we can do education events um, but to make higher impact we have to get to the policy level. We have to engage people to learn how to advocate for themselves and to be allies and advocate for other people. Uh, because when you make laws and you have policies, that's when you impact a broader group of people, right? Um, so 
They repealed it in January of 2022. We knew, we knew they were gonna repeal it. As soon as the election results were in, we knew we couldn't publicly say anything or do anything. We had to wait until they made the first move. Uh, but we were sort of organizing, but we, we had to organize much quicker after the reorganization <laughs> meeting. Uh, and so um, we did that. And so our goal before the, the um, law was repealed uh, later in January was to get as much media awareness as we could, get as many people as engaged, and get it on the record of what, what happened, what was said, what was true, what was not true, and just have it all out there. Um, and so then the uh, council voted to repeal it, I think on January 24th, January 24th, 2022. And um, it was sort of lucky or serendipity, I don't know, that Ice Fest uh, was happening at the same time. And so, you know, that's something we work with a lot of people who are resilient and have a lot of energy. Uh, although our reserves are getting pretty diminished uh, by this point. Um, but we're like, you know what, we're charged up. Let's use this regional destination event to put Chambersburg on the map and um, elevate the story. And so we did that. And so we had a lot of wonderful uh, volunteers who helped us um, get it elevated and it, it got elevated worldwide. Um, Y'all saw it, right? <laughs> okay, great, all right. So, uh, but um, also locally, uh, you know, we had an opportunity to demonstrate to our local LGBTQ community that uh, they're still loved, they're still welcome. Uh, most people don't feel this way in our community. And even national surveys, I don't know, it's over like 70% of Americans believe in LGBTQ rights. It's just we have these petty people uh, in leadership right now. So we wanted to demonstrate uh, some solidarity and um, bring out the flag uh, all across during during Ice Fest. And we were really fortunate too to have businesses that stepped up. They were happy to show the flag. They were happy to have a um, special drink. Deer House paid a special drink and to donate the funds to us. Um, so now what? Um, so going back to that little seed that I mentioned about voter education and who do we elect and you know, how do we get like-minded people in who actually care about people um, into elected positions. And so that's where we're at. Um, we are strategizing. Uh, we have a few uh, committees that we're organizing and recruiting volunteers to be involved in. One is a voter education committee, um, which will include voter registration efforts, um, identifying candidates who can run for local office um, and other offices um, across locally, regionally, and who knows, maybe even the state. Um, so we have a lot of work to do. Uh, but there are also a lot more people who are interested, and as Philip said, a lot of people came out of the woodwork uh, with what just happened because they didn't know. And that's another thing. <clears throat> people aren't paying attention. You know, there's, <laughs> there's so much going on in the world and our lives, and, and I get it. Um, so I think that's another like challenge that we'll have to navigate and, and figure out, um, you know, how do we get the right messaging out and get to the right people and get it sustained engagement um, into this initiative going forward. So voter education committee, um, we also have a business alliance committee, um, and then sort of a, a group that is continuing on, you know, how do we continue to keep this in front of borough council? Um, that being said, it's been really hard to get people, because uh, we, we were doing call to actions all last year and then you know it was like high low high low and then you know slap in the face <laughs> and so, so people are burned out our regular allies and champions and advocates are burned out and so uh, they're recharging and uh, but how do we bring on the new people um, so that's kind of where we're at 
recharge and then how do we bring in our, our new allies and, and advocates and move forward together. So that's an update. Yeah, yes. You left out an awful lot of really neat things that happened. Okay, now I want to hear what you, yeah. <laughs> that, that you were, um, you, Franklin County Coalition of Progress, were, were just instrumentally involved in. Um, first of all, one of the most delightful things that happened was a brand new small business in town in April had a conversation with one of her employees who was very upset about the discrimination that she was experiencing. And this is Dr. Rachel Day, been in town for what, four or five years. So she, write a, she wrote a very articulate note to every member <coughs> of Borough Council uh, requesting a non-discrimination ordinance. And um, that, so, so the very first meeting about that had 100 people in attendance, two people against it, who were complaining about, wait, you didn't get the word out. And the name of the game was, we had as much time as you did, but we got 100 people out, and you got a paid political ad advocate out, 103.7, and that was it. And of course, the guy who's being accused of this whole thing, the only borough council member who has ever been reprimanded formally since, what, 200 years now? Forever. And, and um, so, I mean, that was, that was really neat. Uh, and, and of course, one of the overwhelming comments they've always made is that we don't have discrimination. We don't have discrimination here. And, and you know, you don't have enough fingers and toes to count the number of people that got up there and, and their, gave their own personal testimony in tears of what they had experienced. And so my comment to Michelle Jensen, so, so you, you, you hear that, but you don't believe it because it's not sworn testimony. Is that why you say there's no, there's no, you know, <laughs> you know, so she was, you know, blown out of the sack on that deal right quick. So, so that was one example right there. And, and, um, the other thing that I have to, I have to make sure that everybody's aware of this whole time you were keeping the group organized. I mean, they were, they surely were, you know, loose, loose cannons, except we were only shooting BBs back in those days. But I mean, you, you really had people organized, your, your, your uh, communication links. I mean, it got to where uh, you wanted people to speak and then you were actually, you know, you know, what do you want to talk about? And then you'd feed them. <laughs> I mean, they sounded great. And the other thing which has been unbelievably successful is, is and you didn't even mention this, which is another outrageous, outrageous thing. So, so um, Kaufman, who was who received the reprimand, says we're going to we're going to stop this uh, zooming stuff, which was just outrageous. I mean, unbelievably stupid. And so, what did you do? You recorded every friggin' council member or a council meeting, and then fed it out to all of these people. So everybody got got the zooming, whether they they couldn't be there, but I mean, everybody knew what was going on. That was just that was unbelievably important. Um, all right, how many of you guys went to, uh, Preston, Preston was, was obviously involved with it. How many of you went to the, to the uh, uh, Council for the Arts uh, uh, Spelling Bee this weekend? Chambers for Community Theaters. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was amazing. This is the very first, first of all, I mean, Mary and I have, have had subscriptions now for four decades, and this was one of the very best of the whole lot. Mm -hmm. And here they, and here Rachel Kern, uh, just, just a little, little, uh, Free, free speech and, and you know, hammer the NDO revocation in Chambersburg. It's almost as if it came off of ABC or something. That, that was great. That was just stupendous. So, I mean, you're right. You, you know, there's a tendency to, to get tired, but man, there's a lot of people that are getting re rejuvenated very, very quickly. And, it, and, and uh, you and your troops were, were an instrumental part of continuing to feed them the information they needed and and give them a public voice and, and this sort of thing. And it was neat. Thank you. And I still have two, two of my rainbow masks and stuff like that. <laughs> I mean, you had all the little stuff that, that was out there. Um, I, you know, it's, it's, it's and, and I'm really, I'm really proud that, that the Rotary Club has been actively involved. Uh, and we have, we have, you know, two or three members that, that are not happy about it. Um, 
I'm, I'm one of the oldest guys around, and so I've been a Rotarian for, for well over four decades. And I remember, I, I want to just share this with you. I remember in 1980, whatever it was, the biggest change Rotary had when they when they admitted females, and we lost three major members. Because this is a guy, this is a guy's organization. We don't want females. And the rest of us said, sign our take a hike. And and now Rotary is is um, I don't know how many years we've got we we've gone with, with you know females heading up all of all the roles. But I mean they, they were playing power. a major, a major <laughs> role in, in, in organizing and in, uh, and everything else which is which is just wonderful. But I mean all of this is is feeding off of a lot of the, the uh, groundswell that, that Franklin County Coalition for Progress has, has put together. Um, it's neat and, and well, you know, sure, racial reconciliation is very much uh, an element, elemental part of, of the work these, but, but I mean, you were, you were there giving all this support. Uh, the very first MLK day, lost money and you picked up the, you know, a lot of people don't meet, don't realize you, you guys picked up the town. I mean, we raised as much as we could and, and spent even more. <laughs> And you picked up that to, to make a difference in, in this sort of thing. So it's just, um, it, it is just extraordinary. The legacy that, that, that uh, you guys have put together has, has just been exceptional. It really has. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that perspective too, that history. Sometimes we get just caught up in just trying to keep things going. The, the, only, the only, let me just add one more thing. As old as I am, I keep forgetting things. Um, it's really important to realize that, that yes, LGBTQ was, was an important part of the NDO, but they were not the only thing going. I mean, the whole um, extraordinary, horrible um, Native American Indian um, discrimination still going on today. Uh, the largest Holocaust the world has ever experienced was what the Americans did to the Native American Indians. You know, the Nazis, their Holocaust was nothing compared to what we've done to ours. Okay, and then from there, um, uh, you know, you, you've got the, uh, obviously the, the, the blacks, the, you, you didn't mention anything about that, and that's still going on. And, and so I mean, all, of, you know, all of these people marginalized were, were going to be positively impacted and will be when we get this thing changed again. Uh, and you didn't mention uh, a very important factor that, that you know, we only had one Burl out of 71 to revoke it, and it's us. Yeah. Very, very proud moment, very proud moment. And the other thing that you missed is, is the situation with, um, <laughs> the other thing that you missed was, was, was when, um, um, public, public attendant, uh, when, when Matt Fogel, when, when Matt Fogel was, was, uh, interviewed by Jeremy, yeah. and, and, uh, his famous comment was, Black Lives Matter, period. And so Kaufman writes this, this straight out Republican 101 stuff. And, and within 24 hours, 600 signatures that you orchestrated. I mean, you know, that's, that's unbelievably important. I'm, I'm taking up way too much time, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thanks for being a cheerleader. <laughs> And our recollection. The next time we write one of these, we're going to call you and be like, hey, tell them, make sure we're not forgetting anything. Um, do we have any other questions from Noel for Noel? You're not allowed to ask anymore, but. I'm curious, I'm curious to know whether you think the pendulum is, is actually swinging our way. I mean, slowly, but is it, is it swinging our way, or are we still, are we still, Seeing the effect of Donald Trumpism. In the oh, yeah. 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 Clint, I, I didn't ask you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, Danny, I think about this, I thought about it this morning, and I was having a conversation with a friend that I feel, a friend that I feel like the swings are getting more intense. Um, and, and they had shared that over the last several elections, you know, if we think about it every four years, um, that they too felt like the most recent uh, iteration, the Trump, the Trump thing is still with us. And so now we're having what I feel like is sort of a local backlash from what happened, you know, 
-hmm. our backlash to 2016. Now we're having a backlash that's playing out, like demonstrated by like these moms groups. Are you are you seeing these moms groups and um, extreme right of right uh, religious people who are co-opting words like love and tolerance and diversity and inclusion and turning them into bad words because they were part of a, a lexicon that the social justice movement used. There are words that have been integrated into the workforce uh, with diversity and inclusion. I mean, this is happening now and it's here in Franklin County. And so that, that I don't know if that answers your question. I, I don't know that we're where we, need, where we need to be. I don't think we are. <laughs> I, well, just, I, I just wonder if we're making progress. I think we're making progress um, because people are coming out of the woodwork and people are feeling comfortable to even express their opinions and support. When you have 100 people show up to a council meeting who are allies for the LGBTQ community and want a law to be passed, that's progress. I, I think that's progress. Get people excited to show up and they showed up. It's just we had the wrong people elected <laughs> who are in power. So, yeah. Well, on the state level, is much going on to change the state law or? So with what happened to us, it elevated the discussion at the state level. Um, but from what I've heard uh, from people who are on the inside and work a little bit more at the state level, they don't think that there's going to be much movement anytime soon on amending the state law. They were hoping for that, they, but I don't, they, it's not there. Um, and I guess there are several different types of uh, pieces of legislation um, that committees won't advance beyond committee. And, um, yeah. Well, you said there's 71 municipalities have the NDO. Maybe those like large, large cities like Philadelphia or Pittsburgh. Or yeah, or yes, yes, and small communities. Huntington. 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 Very rural, rural communities. Like Huntington passed and kept. Yeah. Even after the rear out. Is it all the same language? Is it it's a different uh, NDOs or? For the most part. For the part. most part, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know ours originally was pretty much the same as Gabby's, but now just a few things changed. Right. right, and you know, a couple of the things that we changed with the local ordinance was to take out having um, the local human relations committee commission that would have been constituted with passing the ordinance taking away um, the role of them being an adjudicating entity. And, but yet, people could still file um, at the local, at the local, um, uh, well, you're a lawyer, what's the local court? District magistrate? District master, I think it's district magistrate, uh, and with the PA Human Relations Commission. Okay. Um, so they wouldn't forfeit their ability to have like legal action taken in, in the case of uh, complaint of discrimination but what the local HRC would have done was also provide mediation public service for free which I think we could all do with a little bit of mediation and <laughs> I think it would have been a wonderful public service to offer to the community right. yeah I don't live in Chamber I live in Shippensburg so um, not not the borough but that area mm -hmm. and it's surprising to me that Shippensburg passed not, not to be, <laughs> yeah, but we, we passed with the ship is right now in Chambersburg. It's just, and these, I mean, looking at these demographics, it's. I'm, I always kind of go to the Huntington fact. Like, I think it's super cool that the Rainbow Fan over in Huntington were able to get something like this passed. And then not only did they get it passed in Huntington, their borough council is like pretty much switched over like ours did, but they didn't. They kept it, even though they. I guess there's. I think that they just maybe saw the, the really? like that it doesn't cost them anything. I don't know. I don't really know what exactly was like in the minds of the people here that repealed the, it. The, but the, there were the president was personally butt hurt and made it a point to right. feel. That. I think that's absolutely right. I think that's the difference. <laughs> I think that's the difference here. Yeah. I think it was driven by one guy's petty and vindictive nature. And he had the opportunity 
because there were so many new people right. on council, they didn't know any better. Well, I think he recruited them. Yeah, and he I, I think, uh-huh. picked them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah, as organized as progressive people are. Oh, no, they would did a fabulous job yeah. organizing. What, what is the voter turnout Not for our elections? <laughs> Was it... 18%? Yeah, originally it was 23, it was up to 26, so they I got a bigger, bigger turnout right. in, in this last election, I think it was 18%, because I know Amy, our Amy, put that in one of these, one of our pieces on the website. Um, it was low voter turnout for an awful election, and it was an awful election, yeah. But you know, I, I knocked on doors. <laughs> you know, I know a lot of people knocked on doors in here too. Like, we were knocking on doors for like-minded candidates, which I made yeah, in the I first that, time I had knocked on a door. I think the Democratic effort was outstanding. Yeah. But, yeah. I, don't know. I interrupted you. You were saying Huntington, probably, they have an ordinance. It hasn't caused havoc. And there wasn't anybody on council with a personal agenda to get it repealed. So, it just is. Maybe one day for here, but okay. Well, I think that <laughs> that wraps us up. Um, thank you for coming to Evening Club. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Yeah. Good to see you. Yep, good to see you. And Kim is not here, so I'm trying to remember what is happening next month. Next month is checking and stuff. Checking and stuff and Earth Day. Earth Day and checking and stuff. What are we doing for Earth Day, Lynn? I don't know. There's some event in town. I don't know anything about it. I just saw it on the chamber calendar the other day, so I don't really know. I know that we are playing chicken and stuff as one our meeting day, I'm pretty sure, yeah. so that that's what we're doing next month. And that's then, the Monday after Easter. Yeah. Yes. What is, there's something, we are doing something for Earth Day, I just can't remember what it is right now. Should we call Brad? No. Brad? Brad's probably playing. But I feel like in the plethora of emails that we get, I know that I know we're doing something. We're doing something for Earth Day. If you want to know, I'm sure you'll get a reminder soon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 